I call Clayton Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise in support of this bill for New Zealand First, and uh, would just like to start by acknowledging the people in the gallery that are here today that are clearly sports fans. Uh, Colin Charles, it's great to see you here, and uh, and also to speak to this bill. And unlike some of the members that have spoken here today, I don't have a lot of fluffery or embroiled in some cross-party uh, discussion. So I'll probably keep it well and truly under my 10 minutes of allotted time. <laughs> Take the 10, you reckon? Sounds like a bench call. So this is an overdue amendment to a piece of legislation that has been around since 1961. It's been wrapped up somewhere under section 240 of the Crimes Act. Mr Speaker, it is ambiguous at best to know whether match fixing is covered by existing offences in the Crimes Act or not. So what better way to ensure it exists is to clearly and concisely put it in. There is only one minor but very important amendment to the bill, which I'll read out to you now, sir. It says, anyone who obtained or a benefit or caused a loss by engaging in match fixing would commit an offence and be liable to a maximum penalty of seven years imprisonment. I think that's very, very important, Mr Speaker, because New Zealand's culture is made around sports. We get great pleasure in having discussions at our local pub or around the television on a Saturday night when we watch our our favourite matches and our sports games, whether it be the, uh, the, the um, Tour de France or the All Blacks game, and I think we can all cast our mind back to many times throughout recent times which have been hitting the headlines, but also going back to 1981 when we had the inf infamous underarm uh, cricket in the final of the Australian versus New Zealand Benson and Hedges when Trevor Chappell uh, did the nice roll down the road uh, underneath rolled underarm for the final ball of the match, which of course clearly changed the outcome or potential outcome of that match. And in 1995, when the Rugby All Blacks, uh, All Blacks were playing the uh, final against South Africa, and of course we know the outcome of that, where the All Blacks were poisoned and the outcome was altered and changed. And that gives nobody any pleasure. Whether it be in your local boxing arena, whether it be on your local rugby field, whether it be in a netball game, nobody, no matter how it fits in, likes to see this sort of behaviour uh, taking place, sir. Uh, we are a small nation and we have enjoyed great successes in many sports, both internationally and nationally. We hold our achievements very dear to us and sports forms a very important cornerstone of our culture. Doesn't matter if it's from badminton to boxing, rugby to racing, netball to, bo to rowing, it gives us huge amounts of national pride. I, like so many other New Zealanders, believe that li lives are enriched through participation in sport and recreation, and I wish to acknowledge the many dedicated New Zealanders working within the sporting sector to encourage more Kiwis to participate and ultimately benefit from their, their involvement in sport. Mr Speaker, this is why we must protect our sports from any form of mistreatment and why the ethics of sport and good sportsmanship are taught to our youngest right from the start. That we ensure that the moral, ethical values are upheld from the cradle to the grave, sir. 90% of Kiwis spend at least three hours a week taking part in sport and this can be increased. But it only is going to be increased if we have that pride when our youngsters look up to those sporting heroes and uh, live by their code of conduct and don't follow in any underhandedness. Any negative stigma from match fixing activities in sports will impact on all those participating and all those spectating from grassroots to the very elite sport person, no matter their experience level right through to the uh, volunteers who are the backbone of New Zealand sports and recreation who keep it all running behind the scenes, sir. Here in New Zealand, 50% of all adults participate in sports at least once a month. And sport makes up $5.2 billion of New Zealand's GDP. Sir, Interpol warns that illegal sports betting Unregulated fraudulent betting, including associated match fixing activity, is an increasing global problem. Estimated that such betting generated US $140 billion in 2010. So, Mr. Speaker, this bill will ensure that we are able to address match fixing here in New Zealand because it makes common sense, sir. I just had to throw that in. Mr Speaker, this works alongside the New Zealand's policy on sports, match fixing and related corruption releases by the Minister of Sport and Recreation in May. 
This bill is not designed to address every kind of match fixing. It focuses on the most serious kind where the intent is to influence a betting outcome. Perhaps I'd like to say this government could take a leaf out of this legislation too, Mr Speaker, and it touches on what Chris Farfoy was talking about with regards to the whole dirty politics scandal. But not just that, in relation to the fixing of uh, the electorate of Epsom creating an MMP situation uh, with a very much... Uh, I'm out of my Get scope. I'll bring it. it back in. Anyway, we commend this bill, uh, Mr Speaker, into the House. Thank you very much.